Now let's talk about masking. I like to teach masking in a simple way. People understand what a selection is. You have marching ants. No one's afraid of marching ants. But when I start talking about masking, then people kind of like, oh, I don't really know kind of what a mask is. And then if I mention channels, that's when everybody freaks out. So I want to show you in this exercise that a selection and a mask and a channel are essentially the same thing. Photoshop is just showing them to you in a different way. Yes, they do different things. They're not exactly the same thing. But you can use masks and learn what channels do by understanding what selections do. And everybody knows and understands what a selection is. I'm going to start by making a quick selection here. I have a background picture that I want to use and I want to pull this girl off of out of her background and place it on the new background image. And I'm going to use my quick selection tool. This happens to be my favorite selection tool. It looks for areas of contrast. And sometimes it's easier to select the opposite thing of the thing that you're trying to select. So I'm actually going to select the background. I'm going to admit this is a brush. My quick selection tool is a brush. I'm using my bracket key, my right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And depending on the size of your brush, it's a tolerance setting. So the bigger the brush, the looser my selection. The tighter my brush, the tighter my selection. I'm actually on the wrong layer. This selection tool is actually looking at the pixels. So I'm going to go to my layer zero and I'm going to try this again. And now it's making a bit of a better selection here. I'm not going to worry too much about the edges of her hair. I'm going to show you how to use Refine Edge to get a better selection on her hair. And I have a little bit too much in here. So if I hold down the Alt or Option key, I can subtract from my selection. Now what I want to do is I actually want to invert my selection. I'm trying to select her and I want to get her and her hair. So I'm going to hold down Command Shift I or that would be Control Shift I on the PC and that just inverts my selection. You can also find that right up here, Inverse under the Select menu. And I'm just going to add just some little bits in here and I'm going to take away some of this because I don't want the background in there. But again, I'm not, I'm not trying to select the wispy hairs. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm good on the parts I am selecting. The trick to using the quick selection tool is you want to keep the edge of your brush inside of the thing that you're trying to select. And it's, it's a smart tool. It kind of learns as you go. And I'm going to show you that a little bit more in the next selection that I'm going to make. So I have, I have a pretty good selection going here. Now I need to get all the wispy parts of her hair, which is really tricky. But we have this Refine Edge button up here in my options bar. I'm going to click on Refine Edge. And you can see I have different ways of previewing my selection. So I can start with my original Marching Ants. I can look at it in overlay mode. I can view it on black. I can view it on white. And I can view it on black and white. Black and white, this is actually my mask. Okay, I can go to reveal or on layers and then reveal layers. So if this is my mask and this is my selection, you can see it's the same thing, right? I have my selection and my mask. So let's go a little bit further. I'm going to leave her on black. And here inside of my Refine Edge, I have a brush. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this brush. And again, I can use my left and right bracket keys to make the brush larger or smaller. And I'm just going to kind of come in here and brush over the areas of her hair that I want to add back in. And I don't have to be really careful. You can see it's kind of smart and, it, and it's grabbing all those little hairs for me. I know I have one kind of crazy one here. Right? And it's, it's really doing a really good job. Much, much faster and easier than I could do by, on my own. And if you make a mistake and you accidentally bring too much in, it's not a big deal. You can, also, you, would, you can always undo what you've done. There's a plus in my brush. If I hold down the Alt or Option key, I get a minus, and then I can minus back over, and it'll remove that part. But I actually do want these little pieces in here. There's a lot of other things that are going on 
inside of this dialog box. I really want to get this piece of hair right here, which I'm not going to talk about right now. However, I can turn on the Smart Radius button and I can show my radius and you can kind of see what I've selected. And I don't really mean to be selecting this part, so I'm going to come back in and kind of erase that part by holding down the Alt or Option key. Okay, you can also, if you click on the brush, if you right click on the brush, you can see there's an Erase Refinements tool. That's what I'm accessing when I hold down the Alt or Option key. Okay, kind of want that in there. So I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of refining it myself and it's helping me do the work. So I'm going to uh, turn off my show radius and I think that that selection actually looks pretty good. So again, Marching Ants, this is my selection. Black and white, there's my mask. That's a great looking mask. You want your mask, your mask is going to be mostly black and white and some variations of gray. So with that, I have lots of choices of how I want to output this. For now, so, you can, so I can drive the point home that masks and selections are very similar, I'm going to leave selection checked for output. I'm going to click OK. I'm back to my marching ants on my image. And you can see here, and what I want to do is non-destructively knock out the background. At the bottom of my layers panel, I have a new layer mask. When I have a selection and I click on new layer mask, it automatically turns my selection into a layer mask. If I hold down the shift key, that will turn my layer mask off. If I hold down the control or command key, it will reselect my selection. Okay, so I can go back and forth between mask and selection, selection and mask. Now, the other thing I want to show you is so I click on the channels panel, here's our layers mask. It's our layer mask is now an alpha channel. I have a couple extra in here because I saved them. I made the selections earlier and I saved them. And they get saved. When you save a selection, it gets saved as an alpha channel. And you'll notice that alpha channel looks an awful lot like a mask. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my layers panel. I don't need my selection anymore. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a command or control D to deselect everything. Now what I want to do is I want to take this layer and I want to not only place her on the background, which I've succeeded in doing, but I want to actually have these leaves in front of her. So now I have a little bit of a dilemma. She already has a layer mask on her, but I need to create another mask so that she sits behind the leaves. Well, I can do that. What I can do is I can take this layer zero and I'm just going to group it. Command or Control G to create a group. And now she's, it's just one layer, but she's in a group all by herself. And I'm going to turn that off and I want to create another selection. I'm going to create the leaves selection. Again, I'm going to use my quick selection tool. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger using my small bracket key. And I'm just going to quickly kind of come through here and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to get the details in. I'm going to zoom in. And what I'm going to do is see there's a plus in there. If I hold down Alter Option, there's my minus. Now, you notice when I did that, I kept the edge of my brush inside the area that I was subtracting from. Don't go over the edge, and it kind of does it for you, right? So I'm just going to kind of click, and it snaps, and it does it for me. Now, this area is too big, so I'm going to go ahead and make my tool smaller and stay inside. If you go over the edge, for example, if I come in here and I do this, see how it's going to select my leaf? And that's not what I want. So you've got to make sure that you don't go over the edge. Okay? And I need to do this all the way around, but I've already saved the selection so you don't have to watch me do this whole thing. So I'm going to select nothing and you saw my save selection in my channels panel, right? So here's my save selection. There's a couple of things I can do. I can load my selection, which we've been doing for years, 
But just to drive the point home that a selection and a mask are the same thing, and an alpha channel, here's an alpha channel. If I click and hold Command or Control and I click on that alpha channel, it'll turn it into a selection. I now have my marching ants. You can also do this at the bottom of the channels panel. I can turn it back into a selection right here. I'm going to click back on RGB, back into my layers panel, turn on my group, I'm going to select my group, and now I'm going to take that selection, I'm going to turn it into a layer mask on that group. I had the wrong thing selected, not a big deal, opposite of black is white. All I have to do is invert my mask. So Command or Control I to invert the mask, and there she is. She's hiding there behind the leaves.